Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Jackie Tonawanda, the self-professed female Ali, or was she? Jackie Tonawanda was a pioneering figure in women's professional boxing. By age 13, she had begun boxing in Gleason's gym in Brooklyn. She trained hard and relentlessly, sparring against male opponents who she kept up with. Tonawanda began her boxing career in the 1950s, a time when women's boxing was not widely recognized or supported. Weighing in at 175 pounds, Tonawanda was a legitimate heavyweight and struggled to find women in her weight class. She continued to spar with men, as she stated women couldn't take her punch power. For her skills in the ring and her talkativeness, Jackie Tonawanda was known as the female Ali. She was a pioneering fighter in the heavyweight division, though she found it difficult to get a license as a professional. Rumors circulated about the dangers of blows to women's chest causing breast cancer. In 1974, Tonawanda began her application for a boxing license. Women could already legally be pro wrestlers and boxing managers in the state, so when her application was denied, she fought hard to make it right. Tonawanda set out to prove that women were more than capable in handling the sport of boxing as males were. She brought a discrimination lawsuit against the New York State Athletic Commission for sexism, which was denied because the commissioners believed that a female boxer's reproductive organs and breasts would suffer too much trauma. Undaunted, Jackie forged ahead, charging that women had every right to compete in the ring in just the same way that female wrestlers were permitted. She sued the state again for discrimination, and the state Supreme Court ruled in her favor and encouraged her to sue once again to have the laws preventing women from boxing be revoked. Jackie Tonawanda did not pursue further legal action, but in the coming years she would continue to fight in underground bouts. In 1976, she was invited to attend a training camp for Muhammad Ali. Her movement to recognize women's boxing as legitimate was taken further by fellow boxer Kathy Davis in 1978, which led Davis, Tonawanda, and Marion Tremiar to be the first women to receive boxing licenses in the state of New York. After gaining her license and being allowed to fight professionally, Tonawanda was much older than her contemporary opponents. She fought in one professional bout against Diane Clark and lost in the sixth round by a split decision, making her professional record 0-1. to one. In 1986, she was injured in a car accident, which forced her to officially retire, ending her professional career. Due to the majority of her fights being unsanctioned, as women were not allowed to prize fight, her record is hard to determine. Sources claim it is anywhere from 23 to 0 to 36 to 0. Despite this uncertainty, Tonawanda's achievements go far beyond her boxing record. She was the first woman to box in Madison Square Garden in 1975. Her opponent was kickboxer Larry Rodania, whom she knocked out in the second round with a strike that broke his jaw. A man fighting a woman in such a public venue was unheard of. However, it pushed female fighters into the spotlight, and Tonawanda received many more offers to fight other men for the publicity. Despite the lack of opportunities, she persevered and became one of the prominent female boxers of her time. She was known for her fierce fighting style and was a pioneer in breaking barriers for women in the sport. Tonawanda fought both male and female opponents during her career challenging traditional gender roles in boxing. Tonawanda's determination and skill led her to numerous achievements. She won the New York State Women's title in 1959, which made her the first ever female boxing champion in New York. She also represented the United States in international competitions. She was known in her prime as the female Ali. Jackie Tonawanda was an incredible woman who boxed for years before women were allowed to fight in sanctioned bouts. 
She was one of the great pioneers of women's boxing, being one of the first women awarded a boxing license in New York. She lost her only professional fight, but holds an impressive record from her underground bouts. She was even named the number one light heavyweight by Boxing Illustrated in 1979 and 1980. Even after she hung up her gloves, she went on to coach champions and prove that women were just as fierce in the ring as any man. Tonawanda's greatest achievements, however, was her resilience in facing the New York State to legalize and license female boxers. But was it true or was it all just a sham? In February 2022, it was alleged that Jackie Tonawanda fabricated everything about her fights with others. It was also stated that she was known to fabricate fights that she was in and lie to anyone that would give her a chance to get something written about her. In the many underground bouts that she claimed to have won, there are no opponents named in the records of any of the fights that she told the media that supported her claims of being undefeated. It was determined that she had only one fight as a professional and lost that fight to Diane Clark. In 2021, Jackie Tonawanda was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. She was inducted in the Trailblazer category. There are many whom to this day feel that she does not deserve the title or the induction honor. However, there are those supporters that believe that it doesn't matter what her actual record was. What matters is that she was a voice for women's boxing and was one of the first to be granted a license. She was a mentor and an advocate for women's boxing. On June 9, 2009, Jackie Tonawanda died of colon cancer at Harlem's Mount Sinai Hospital. With no life insurance, pension, or savings, there were no funds to pay for a funeral, and her body was slated to be buried in a potter's field on Hart Island. But thanks to Ring 8, the Veterans Boxing Association, enough funds were raised to have her body buried in a marked grave in the Bronx, memorializing her story and cementing her place within boxing history. Until next time. If you like little-known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.